The Story of Cotton First they called it tree wool. Early European travelers to ancient Asia came home with tales of an amazing wool that grew on tree. This was the first knowledge that Western civilization had about the fluffy white fiber. We now call cotton. The earliest written account of cottons were discovered in the ruins of an ancient city in India showing that cotton was used 3,000 years before Christ. The word cotton itself comes from the Arabs, who were probably the first to use it as an article of trade. Merchants carried cotton fabrics westward to Spain, France, England, and Italy beginning around 800 AD. Although cotton is believed to have originated in Asia, some historians think that it was first woven into fabric in America. Archaeologists have found cotton fabric in prehistoric graves in Peru. Cotton cloth has also been found in excavations in Utah dating back thousands of years. When Columbus discovered the New World, he found cotton growing in the Bahama Islands and the natives dressed in cotton garments. By this time, cotton was becoming an important item in commerce. Then it became King Cotton. The importance of cotton grew until two centuries later, when English wool merchants sought to outlaw the product. They forced laws to be passed forbidding its use. Cotton fabric are ruining the wool growers, your lordships. But the people demanded cotton fabrics, and the legal restrictions were removed. Soon, England's cotton industry became famous and wealthy. Her muslins and calicos were sold everywhere. Early American settlers first began to cultivate cotton in Virginia. With the aid of slaves during the year 1619, from Virginia, the crop spread to other southern colonies. War. Now where will we sell our cotton? We will set up our own cotton mills here in America. In 1790, Samuel Slater, an Englishman who had come to America to seek his fortune started a cotton mill at Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Tis a foolish venture, lad. We don't know how to build a proper mill in America, since England has denied us her British textile manufacturing secrets. Aye, but I have memorized exactly how British textile machines are made. Three years later, a young Yale graduate, Eli Whitney, visited the South and saw cotton lint being separated from the seed by hand. This is a slow, laborious process. Ah, yes. Too bad it cannot be done by machines. In 10 days, Whitney had constructed the first model of a machine which was to revolutionize the nation's cotton industry. There it is. I call it a gin, short for engine. It actually separates the fiber from the sea. And in no time at all. Whitney's cotton gin ranks high among the great inventions of history. It spurred progress so that by the turn of the 19th century, cotton had become a leading force in American agriculture and business. No wonder a pre-Civil War senator gave it the title of King Cotton. And Slater did build a spinning machine entirely from memory. The mill built by Slater and his partner, Moses Brown. The first successful cotton mill in America, now is a museum at Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And it's also white gold. We use cotton and products made from cotton every day of our lives. Over 10,000 uses for cotton are already known, and scientists are finding more all the time. Cotton is indispensable in our daily lives. There are currently 850,000 farms in the United States that grow cotton. The region where cotton is predominantly grown is called the Cotton Belt, and it includes 18 states stretching from Virginia to California. When preparing land for growing cotton, farmers first break up the soil to loosen it. They then use a harrow to break up any large clods and smooth the surface. 
The field is then laid off in rows, commonly 40 inches apart, and the cotton seed planted in the rows. By the time the plants are 3 to 4 inches high, it's time for cultivation to remove weeds and loosen the soil. The young plants must be weeded and thinned so that the ones left will have plenty of growing space. This is done by cotton choppers with hose. The cotton farmer must constantly guard against the many insects that feast on the plants. Airplanes are often used to dust or spray the fields with insecticides. Millions and millions of dollars each year are lost because of insect pests, the worst offender being the destructive boll weevil and boll worm. Hot summer weather causes the cotton plants to grow rapidly and they begin to bloom. By late summer, the cotton bowls are mature and ready for picking. To facilitate picking, the fields are often treated with a chemical defoliant that causes the leaves to drop off, leaving the cotton bowls exposed to more sunlight. This results in cleaner and easier to pick cotton. Workers with long pick sacks then go into the fields to pick the cotton from the open bowls. More than one-third of the cotton crop in the United States today, however, is harvested by machines which can gather cotton 50 times faster than a man can pick by hand. From the field the cotton goes to the gin. Whitney's machine could gin only 50 pounds of cotton a day. Today's machines can turn out a 500 pounds bale in 6 to 8 minutes. After the cotton is baled, it's ready for sale. Samples are cut from each bale to be used by the buyer in judging its value. Color, length of fibers, and cleanliness of the lint are the main characteristics that determine the selling price of cotton. Linters are the short, fuzzy, tag ends of lint left on the seed. They are used, among many other things, to make ammunition, camera film, lacquer, phonograph records, and dynamite. All from cottonseed is used in food products, shortening, cooking oils, margarine, salad oils, and dressings are all made from cottonseed. After the oil is squeezed from the cottonseed kernels, the meal remaining is used for livestock feed. It is rich in protein and a fast-growing use for protein-rich cottonseed flour is in health breads for people requiring low-starch diets and in other baking products. Even the seed hulls are useful, as they can be used as the basis for many plastic articles as livestock feed, and in various other ways. Radio cabinets, feed, sweeping compound for cleaning floors. Now, what is being done with the cotton lint? The cotton bales are shipped to the spinning mills where a complicated series of processes awaits the raw cotton. First it is thoroughly fluffed and cleaned by huge machines. Then other machines comb and pull the cotton to make the fibers lie smooth and parallel. This is called carding. Some fibers get extra combing to make the yarn suitable for the highest grade cotton fabric. Machinery for making yarn is based on the same principle. As an old-fashioned spinning wheel, many intricate devices has been added, however, to increase capacity the process to mass production technique. The lint in the bale is only part of the value of the cotton. The cotton seed that remains are used in hundreds of products. After the cotton is spun into yarn, it goes to the weaving room where cloth is made. Much of the yarn may be dyed before it is woven into cloth. This is one of the dyeing vats used in a textile mill. Print cottons go through huge presses, which print designs on the cloth, much like magazines and newspapers are printed. The principle of weaving has not changed since prehistoric times. When humans first made cloth, Rows of threads stretched lengthwise on a frame are interlaced over and under with crosswise threads by using a large, blunt needle called a shuttle. Today, great factories house thousands of busy looms weaving cotton cloth at tremendous speeds. 
based on that ancient prehistoric weaving principle. About 10 billion yards of cotton cloth are produced in this country annually, enough fabric to reach to the moon and back 12 times. What a change has come about in the textile mill. Since the first little New England mills produced only 8 to 10,000 yards of cotton fabric each year. Where are these incredible billions of yards of cotton cloth used today? Everywhere. Since there are many different kinds of cotton cloth, there is a cotton fabric suitable for almost any imaginable use. More than three-fifths of all, all our clothing is made of cotton, socks, shirts, dresses, slacks, underwear, pajamas even the linings of all shoes. Some cotton materials are light, delicate, and sheer. Others are coarse, heavy, and thick, because cotton is washable, durable, and comfortable. It's the world's most popular fiber. Our homes are full of cotton, too. Sheets, pillowcases, upholstery, slipcovers, mattresses, curtains, draperies, towels, shades, rugs, tablecloths, napkins, book covers, wall coverings, and many, many other articles from wash rags to awnings. Every automobile and truck contains cotton in the form of padding, linings, upholstery, and other products. Hospitals depend on cotton for sheets, bandages, absorbent cotton, and uniforms for doctors and nurses. Our armed services use scores of cotton-made items. With all these uses of cotton, scientists are constantly finding new applications for this wonderful and versatile gift to man. Coated and resin-treated cotton fabrics are used for many products, such as luggage, tabletops, boats, and airplane instrument panels. Cotton fabrics are now made wrinkle-art. At work, at home, at play. Every day, enjoy cotton freshness. Simple and easy to wash. Nitrogen monoxide complicated instructions needed. Cotton is even stronger when wet than when dry. Boil, scrub, and wring it when necessary. Cotton can take it. Cotton, tough, washable, lasting, makes soap and water freshness. Yours at small cost and little effort. Healthful and easy to wash. Cotton requires no complicated instructions. It is even stronger when wet than when dry so it can be boiled, scrubbed, and wrung out when necessary. Cotton can stand heat and washing to make it sterile, and its outer freshness helps maintain inner health. Cotton is also thrifty, as it repays with long wear and sturdy service the simple care that keeps it fresh. If you found this video educational and entertaining, Please help support the channel by subscribing and sharing this content. Also hit the notification bell, so you could be notified when we upload new videos. Thanks for watching.